Hi guys, what's up? Today's video is about taking your sketch and transferring it to a different surface. All right, so everyone's process is different, but there are a variety of reasons why you might want to transfer a piece of art to another surface to work on. And one of these reasons uh, that I think is the biggest advantage is that you get to refine a concept before starting. Paper is a lot easier to sketch on in general, so if you are working on a piece that will eventually be on a different surface such as canvas, wood, um, or wall, you might want to really figure out what you are doing before you start committing to something like paint. Also these other surfaces are a lot harder to erase or to change things once you start going on them. Another reason why you might want to do this is because sometimes we make mistakes. So say we're working on a watercolor piece and you make something that is not easily corrected or irredeemable, you can take the best features of it, get your line drawing back, and transfer it to a new surface to work on. So let's talk about the many ways you can actually do transfers. One way you can do it is using the age-old classic, a grid method. A grid method is when you have an image or drawing and there is a grid overlaid on it, and the new surface that you wish to transfer it to is a proportionately sized grid. Uh, this can be done larger or smaller than the original. It is excellent for scaling. The old masters used this method for centuries. People still do today. It is really nice because the squares are break down your image so that you can work in small sections and it's easier to get an accurate copy of the original. This way because you can hone in on specific details. You just have to make sure your squares are actually true squares and that you have the same number of squares on your original piece as you do on the new work surface. Another great method is using a light box. A light box is shown here. The one I have is a really old school style, so it's very big and clunky, but they make them very thin and um, a lot brighter these days using LEDs. So if you are using a light box, you wanna make sure that your papers are not shifting as with any method. Uh, here I've used a binder clip to hold my two sheets of paper together and the advantage of doing it in this method is uh, you can go in directly with ink. I uh, find it very useful when taking any kind of pencil drawing and wanting to turn it into a clean ink drawing because then you won't have to worry about erasing any pencil lines later. If you don't have access to a light box you can do the exact same thing with any bright window, something that everyone should be able to get to. If your piece is really big, a window might even be better anyways. Unfortunately, the light box slash window method only really works in the case of using papers that are semi-see-through. So if you're working on thick tone papers or really heavy duty papers, this is not the method you're going to want to use. Transfer paper is another great option for you as you can use it to get your image onto a variety of surfaces. Wood, canvas, paper, all of it will work. Transfer paper is a sheet of paper that has been coated on one side, typically with graphite these days. And what you do is you take your original image, say a copy of a sketch like I have here, and you place it on top of your transfer paper. You wanna ensure that none of these sheets move as with almost any method. I have it taped down on one side with washi tape. And now I can trace over my copy of my sketch with a colored pen or pencil. I like to use a colored pen or pencil because you can easily see what has been done. If you are working solely in pencil, sometimes you might skip lines or go over something too much just makes it a lot easier to see in my opinion. So once you've traced over everything, now you can remove the extra sketch and the transfer paper and you have a clean copy of your image on your new surface. If you don't have transfer paper, you can achieve similar results by coloring on the back of your sketch. Using a soft pencil or charcoal, You'll want to cover the entire area that the image on the other side is covering to ensure that all of your lines can get transferred. Once the back is all covered, you just flip over your image and trace over it just like you would with the transfer paper. It can be a little messy if you're not careful. 
One more method you can use if your budget allows for it is a projector. A projector can be very convenient, especially when scaling up or if you are like me and like to work your sketches out digitally, this is a great option for you. I have a really inexpensive projector that I bought off of Amazon for around 60 US dollars and I use it solely for art purposes. So it was definitely worth it for me. It wasn't terribly expensive and it's easy to get on those irregular surfaces that are not see-through. Down below are links to the art supplies that I think might help you or that I've used or mentioned. And some of these are affiliate links. Please use them if you can. If you're going to want to try them anyways, it does help me out a little bit and lets me know that what I'm doing is actually useful to you guys. So I would love to hear from you. Please comment below or in the community section. Happy painting guys. Until the next video.